Truck Talk Media. C10 Talk, episode 280.3. We've got a few more interviews from the Barrett Jackson Cup and the auction. We've got Rod, we've got Joe, and we've got Keith coming at you. Here we go. Five years ago, I'd have walked up on this truck and I might have had the same questions, right? So it's I don't laugh at them. I just tell them, no, it's it's all carbon. You know, it's not an overlay. You know, it's a, it's a, not a wrap. And uh, it is it is what it is, guys. It's all carbon fiber, cab, you know, the whole truck, every piece. So Damn, son. Hey, guys, let me tell you about LMC Truck. Keeping generations on the road. Think about that. It's pretty deep. So whether your truck was handed down or something you went out and bought, odds are you were handed a bunch of paperwork, maybe a folder. In that folder was probably the catalog. You know the one, the most up-to-date and detailed catalog available today. It's like an encyclopedia for our trucks. Their website is just as detailed and informative. LMCTruck.com lmctruck.com. So whether you're restoring old memories or creating new ones, LMC Truck is here to help. They're more than just a parts company. They truly understand the lifestyle and passion of owning a classic truck. So get out there and get to work on your truck and know that LMC is here to help. You can get online lmctruck.com and order your free catalog today. Keeping generations on the road lmctruck.com let me tell you what melvin post is packing right here i've right, got 411 posi track out back 750 double pumper edelbrock intakes scored over 30 11 to 1 pop-up pistons turbojet 390 horsepower we're talking some bucking muscle what does that do does that blow your mind that just happened welcome to c10 talk your C10 Truck Podcast. And now I have a chance to be the best. Maybe the best in the world. My old man is a television repairman. Got this ultimate set of tools. I can fix it. I said I got 50 cents in that juice box and all I can hear is your mouth flap. Did you hear that? Here's your host, Ronnie Wetch. is up what is up c10 nation let me know if you like this format obviously we've spaced it out a little bit uh this is going to be the third drop of the barrett jackson auction slash cup interviews we've been putting a lot more videos up on youtube truck talk media is the youtube channel so let us know even as far as getting some fords in there obviously they're very high quality builds but uh, it's interesting to see what you guys think, and uh, I want your feedback. So let us know if when we do the shows, uh, the auctions, whatever it might be, if you guys are thinking, hey, spread it out a little bit, give me more to listen to, or do I want it all wrapped up into one one hour long podcast? That's obviously how we usually do it. Uh, I just thought I would space it out a little bit. So 280.3, you've got uh, Rod, obviously Parsons with his carbon fiber. The guy has just had a great 2023, 2024, uh, and rightfully so. Just an amazing build. We've had Rod on over at the Triple Crown, and then uh, back here, he's been everywhere from SEMA to uh, Dino's, Barrett Jackson, Triple Crown. He's doing a little bit of everything 2023, 2024. And then Joe uh, with uh, South City Rod and Customs. Uh, this car is absolutely a stunner. Uh, you know, I just posted something on social media. Obviously, it's not a truck, but it's one of those cars and just the build and the way that it grabs you. It's worthy of an interview. I hope you guys like it. it it's worthy more than that. It's an absolute stunner. Um, love to get that. Just spice things up a little bit, change it up. So hopefully with Joe, you're digging that one. And then with Keith Rosell at the end here, really happy to get him on. He's local. Uh, just don't always catch him at different shows. And uh, this truck has been a, a staple in the Phoenix area for, like I said uh, in the interview, I think it's like seven, eight years that thing's been catching my eye and a lot of people, uh, social media wise and everywhere else too. Beautiful, beautiful build. So uh, congratulations to Keith and, uh, and he let it go. So, uh, you know, that's probably going to be a hard one for him uh, from the perspective of, walking out and checking it out and wasn't an easy decision knowing that uh 
that truck was a big part of who he's been and who he is for the last, you know, eight plus years and the journey of the build. So episode 280.3 coming at you. And then 281, Big Mike Brooks. I've been kind of dangling that one around for a while. I, I interviewed him. Hell, it's been a few months ago. And that's the 86 square body that was stolen out of Ohio. He got it back. Great pod. Uh, I'll drop that one next. Uh, what do I got here? I got LST. So LST coming up this Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Obviously, most people get there Thursday. And uh, I just want to wish everybody uh, safe travels out to LST. Always a great time. Really, you know, I was thinking about it today. It would be fun to do kind of a rollback. And uh, the first year that we took Yellowstone out there, myself, John Oro, Chad Goswick, Goose, uh, my buddy uh, G Breezy Fresh and Easy, Travis rolled out, uh, Grinder rolled out. I-, I was thinking, man, at the 10 year mark, that might be a fun rollback to do that. So we'll see what the future looks like. I think that would be 2026 if we did that. Um, eastbound and down. I'll have to look at the dates, but but I think that's it. I think that would be a fun one. And, and it really doesn't have to be a 10 year. It can just be a rollback. Obviously, we drove out there six years in a row and uh, it was a really good time. So safe, safe travels. I know Brian Good from Grinders headed out. I talked to Joe at the swap meet. I think he's flying out. Uh, a few of the fellas. So it should be a really good time. Hope everybody has a safe trip and a great time at LST. I know Jeff Volker's going to debut his 1993 Indy. I've been doubling that in delicious. It's a one of one, an amazing build. And I hope that just goes off with a bang and, uh, you know, is as well recepted as I think it will be. So good luck to everybody. Have a great trip out to LST. All the guys, uh, Lonnie, Radar, and Jared, uh, they put that thing together. Tons of work. Good luck to them. Great week, LST. All right, enjoy episode 280.3. We'll be back with episode 281 with Mike Brooks. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great week. Late. What's up, what's up? Hey, we're back. We're again. We're at Bear Jackson, and a little different scenario. We've got the 1971. She's dressed up like a 68, 67. Uh, We've got Elaine, uh, Keith, Roselle. Love this truck. This is a, for Arizona, this is a little bit of a local fixture for the Arizona scene. This truck's been around, uh, you know, eight years now. The cool thing is I'll never forget this thing out in like a desert bed and then Hoagie had built a four by four version. And then another local Arizona kid down, he's kind of Tucson and and up in the valley, but this color scheme, you guys nailed it. So when you look back over this journey with this truck and your build, what what comes to mind? Oh, wow. Um, well, you know, this truck was like the first thing that I did for myself when I, when my business started becoming successful. I have an air conditioning business, so it's special to me for that reason. Um, you know, when street trucks wanted to feature the truck, they wanted me to name it. So we named it after my grandma, which was pretty cool, which gave it the timeless Elaine name, you know, cause I feel like the colors, the truck, um, I just feel like it, it they'll just never go out of style. These are those colors that'll just be cool in 10, 15 years. Um, yeah, and I've never had anything as long as this truck. So it's just one of those things that's it's kind of special to me, but it's it's time to move on and let somebody else enjoy it. Um, yeah, I mean, that's it. When you when you have a truck and you put your heart and soul into it and, and, you, and it's kind of like a trophy, like I made it, right? Like I worked hard, I worked my ass off. I've got a successful company now. Um, what goes through your mind once you finally sign the paperwork to put it into Barrett Jackson, which again, for us, we're spoiled. It's right in our backyard, uh, just up the road, you know, 35 minutes and you're here. You've got the biggest successful car auction. You see what these trucks go for. You know what you paid for it eight years ago. Uh, what, what goes through your mind? Oh man, (laughs) all kinds of stuff. It's, uh, you know, luckily, like you said, I built this truck eight years ago, so I'm, I'm into it really nicely you couldn't build a truck like this for a fraction of what i have into it so i feel you know you you know i've driven it for eight years i've had a ton of fun with it so what kind of value can you put on that right you know i've had um so what honestly i'm just whatever i get out of it uh, you know it's going to bring some good money i i'm pretty confident but i'm just happy that someone else is going to be able to enjoy it you know and take it from here when you look back over that journey and you look back over the build is there anything that you would change if you went back and i could say hey keith what would you do different about this build so at the beginning, this truck was supposed to be like 20 different colors, and my buddy Lamar ended up um, 
showing me this color. It's nice like, work, Lamar. Yeah, nice work, Lamar. Um, so, you know, we kind of had all that hashed out before we started it. And honestly, I have no regret, regrets on this truck. I mean, it, I wouldn't change a thing. It's, it's a great looking truck. I love the wheels. Um, I feel like that's got to be one of the hardest things when you take a truck that's this elegant and stylish and you give it the name, you know, Elaine, and you're like, well, you can't just put, there has to be a certain dress shoe on Elaine, it's classy yet sophisticated. Yeah. Was that a hard choice? Yeah, like, you know, once again, you know, there was probably 10 different wheel choices that we were going to do, and the V rods just looked awesome against this gray and white. So that's what we picked. Yeah. Yep. V-Rods are hard to beat. Uh, Leisure Suit, one of my favorite trucks, has a V-Rod. Love that. Uh, stepping up to the motor, uh, you guys did an amazing job here. Uh, this is a less is more. It's clean. There's not a lot going on. And again, eight years ago, you didn't see this all the time as this kind of less is more. Let's just paint it and let the motor stand out for itself. Yeah, yeah definitely. I mean, you know, we wanted to do the slosh tubs in here, which just, I mean... As you can see, everything looks amazing in there. We, you know, I kind of tossed ideas around about doing all the panels like you see in some of the trucks and covering up the motor, but I just didn't want to do that. I think it looks just great how it, you know, it's got a very unique intake. Um, Fat Fender built both of those um, pipe, hand pipes, so you can't buy those. Um, and yeah, it's, it's uh, like you said, less is more on this truck for sure. The funny thing about covering the motor on something like this is that takes away from that classic nostalgic vintage Elaine again. So not doing that and making it futuristic and making it covering up the power plant, the heartbeat, what you guys did. Uh, really, again, the color combo, the white, you're not going to go wrong. The white top is always classy. I mean, I kind of feel like it makes these trucks like a tuxedo. Did you always know that you wanted that 67 to 68 style or what were you thinking even that with it being a 71 to give it that 68 front grille? So I, so what I love about these trucks is that side trim that goes down and I just, I knew that the front end had to match that style, right? So I wanted to do it 67, 68 style. Um, I just love the trim on, on the side of these trucks. So that's why we decided to do that and just kind of scrap the old front end and just, just do everything like a 67, 68, definitely. Yeah, I don't think you're gonna go wrong. And again, the funny thing for Keith and I, we're similar in age and back in the day, 71, 72, I feel like was kind of the predominant champ of that generation of trucks. But as of the last like probably 15 years, the 67, 68 has really become the champ of that of that style yeah. so again you doing this eight years ago you know back which is considered back in the day now yeah. um a little bit ahead of time you, you did a good job on that thank you so thinking about this thing selling friday night she's not going to be home this weekend uh you know. she's going to be gone she'll be back here and then she's going to get hauled out of i guess sunday or monday yeah. um what are you thinking? I mean, what are you, what are you thinking? You're going to hang out all week and be stressed or are you past that point And you're like, you know what? She's kind of already gone. I'm just spending this last few days with her. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I love Bear Jackson. I come, this is like my favorite time of the year, no matter if I'm selling something or not. So I'm here every day, just kind of enjoying the, enjoying everything. And just seeing this go Friday with my family is just cherry on top. So yeah. And overall, you, I think you said you have less than 5,000 miles on this truck in eight years. Yeah. I think 4,100 miles, something like that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Might tell the guy one more rip in it, but I'm assuming that uh, last week you probably had one more rip in it, uh, and then you brought it up here, and uh, I assume that uh, there's a lot of people checking it out because it is a stunner. Yeah, there has been a lot of people that come by. I probably should spend more time back here answering questions, but there it seems to be a lot of interest in the truck for sure. So it'll go to a good home, hopefully. I mean, it's a great truck. Whoever gets it's going to be very happy with it good good well uh even though you might be leaving the c10 scene you're still in the classic truck scene uh you've got your blazer uh you got like a tri-5 over at uh az high test so uh keep it up if there's anything we can do we're happy for you it's been a rad truck we're glad to have this you know here locally good luck friday night yeah thank you buddy appreciate it awesome. late hey guys i've got joe road classic performance products cpp back joe let's talk x10 spindles go yeah, you know, CPP's one of our most popular parts through the years has been our two and a half inch drop modular spindles, really popular part. Well, we've kind of taken that to the next step. You know, we've emulated late model Corvette Silverado Chevy technology into our new X10 drop spindles. They use a steel hub, sealed bearing hub, really strong piece. As you know, Joe, so many guys are building bigger trucks, bigger wheels, bigger brakes, everything bigger and better. Is this X10 something they should be considering? Oh, absolutely. It's oversized bearings. Definitely great for a guy using big brakes, big wheels, which I'm sure all of your guys are. 
All right, guys, there you go. If you're looking to upgrade, you need a new spindle anyways. You're going to lower your truck. You're running a bigger wheel, a bigger brake. CPP's got it for you with their new X10 spindle. Joe, as always, thank you. CPP, classicperform.com. It's classicperform.com. Since the 1960s, U.S. Mags has held the title for the longest-running custom wheel tradition. Experience the wheels that made history and set the trends for American truck culture for decades to come. From cast wheels to full custom one- and two-piece forged wheels, U.S. Mags keeps you and your truck in mind with every new design and model. Our cast wheel series are designed specifically for Chevy trucks and are stocked and ready to ship, giving you the wheels you need when you need them with perfect fitment. Set your ride apart with our custom forged wheels, available in just about any finish and fitment desired. U.S. Mags are guaranteed to distinguish your style and attitude from the rest. Hey guys, are you thinking about swapping out your old motor for a more reliable LSLT based power plant? We've got great news for you. PSI Conversion is offering our listeners 10% off your order. Behind each PSI harness, you get over 10 years of experience in the business, online tech support, phone support, and harnesses made in the U.S. That's PSIConversion.com. And don't forget, use code C10TALK and save 10% today. Marque has been in business for over 40 years. It all started in the original owner's garage. From humble beginnings of a couple parts in a garage to a two-building manufacturing facility making over 6,000 parts, Marque has grown to be one of the country's premier truck parts manufacturers. They not only design the products, but also design the tooling to build the products, guaranteeing quality control. They have made their original parts from the original trucks. Aluminum strips are double polished, creating a mirror finish and crystal clear anodized. They use the highest quality, hand-selected, show-quality wood that will hold up over time. Why? Because it's kiln-dried to precision moisture levels, specifically for Marque. They stock oak, pine, and mini exotics, guaranteeing extremely fast delivery. All parts are manufactured in-house in Oklahoma City, USA. They offer quality parts built by Americans for old American-made trucks. So when you're looking for body moldings, bed strips, bed wood, and so much more, think Mar K. That's mar-k.com. What's up? What's up? Uh, Stunner.com. So obviously we talk trucks. In this case, 33 Fords. Uh, how do you pass this up, right? So we're here. Why would we not do a video? We've got Joe, South City Rod and Customs. This thing is so gorgeous. When you think about the bravado to paint it the way it was painted, and this thing was metal before. So tell us about this car. So Kobe Gewurz, the owner, came to us and said, basically, I, I want to build a cartoon on wheels to honor the era of drag racing from the late 60s, early 70s, where guys were doing psychedelic crazy radical paint jobs to basically attract attention to their cars and differentiate themselves from the pack of all the other funny cars so basically it's a it's a drag race inspired car from the 60s and 70s in much the same style so it's got a no radiator look um it does have a radiator but you know that look of a crazy over-the-top cartoon on wheels well and the key is is you're getting the 60s 70s psychedelic radness but in a 30s car and we it's almost like you're combining eras yeah and that was a lot of the big you know this car was very controversial because you know people didn't mind that we painted stripes on a car but we shouldn't have done it to an early ford uh you know people said if it was a muscle car or something from the late 60s early 70s but uh you know kobe you know a 34 ford is a great body style and it people say it detracts from the lines and I actually think it does the opposite. The, the different colors highlight the lines and, and shapes of the car. If it was all brown, you'd lose all that. Turns out, uh, your car, you get to do whatever you want with it. So uh, I think that these 30s Fords are just, they're gorgeous, right? So then you put this kind of paint job on it. Now, was his vision, did he help you guys with the stance, the louvers? What was South City's job to come up with, and did he work with you completely throughout the build? So he worked with us completely. He always had a vision, and it was actually being built in another shop uh, before us, and they had started uh, a lot. They had built a whole car almost, uh, which we ended up scrapping uh, and going backwards on. This body came from uh, American Pickers, Mike Wolf. Uh, got us a stock, nice, clean stock body. But Kobe always had the vision to put the stripes on the car and always have this crazy engine setback funny car look to the the car from the get-go 
How about how about the stacks? You know, that really adds to it. You get the stacks, you get the look, you get the vibe, you get the paint. And I can hear this thing and it's not even running just by what I'm visually seeing. It's that loud. Yeah, Kobe Kobe always thought stacks, zoomies, uh, hemi. That was always in the vision from from the get go, uh, and he, him, and us at South City, we worked with a multitude of different artists, drawing different renderings to decide how the stripes were going to be, how big they were going to be, where they were going to be, if they were going to be monotone, just switch between two colors. Uh, there was probably more time and effort put into that than building the damn car. <laughs> uh, I, I, I can imagine uh, whoever you know did finally make those decisions. It's laid out so well. We have a local artist, Jimmy Smith, here in Arizona. I did see that he did like the shirt. So you, it's been everywhere. It was on Good Guys, uh, their little print magazine. Uh, we're seeing a lot of this car. Does he have a name for it? Yeah, he calls it St. Christopher, who's the patron saint of travel. So the shifter has the St. Christopher medal on it. Uh, and it's always, you know, Kobe's Instagram handle and his, uh, you know, kind of mystique out there is church equipped because he went to drag races on Sundays as a kid with his dad who drag raced. And uh, so the drag racing was his church on Sunday. So kind of tied in that whole church theme with the name St. Christopher. Yeah, St. Christopher is a stunner. Uh, it might be a little bit of a sinner. You know, another thing, and you can, if you know this, Joe, but maybe not much of an artist for him being a, a graphic artist, Kobe, but you always wonder, is my vision going to come through the way that I think and hope that it is? And then when you have to factor that into the builder as well, right? So when, you, when he looks at it, when he sees it, is his vision what he was thinking and hoping it would be? I think uh, if you'd ask Kobe, he'd probably say it was maybe even a little better. He, uh, you know, he originally, we thought it out with, like I said, all different types of stripes, vertical, uh, you know, laying them horizontally. Um, and I think Kobe's, you know, this is, he's happier than he, he could ever be. And the fact that he gets to drive it and it works as a car, I mean, it's got a thousand road miles on it already looking this crazy. Um, and he doesn't own a trailer, so it's got to be driven. So he's real stoked. Stoked is, is got to be what it is. And for you guys out there, obviously I watched a lot of Magnum, little TC, Island Hoppers, you know, the old helicopter. So uh, I'm, I'm loving this thing. I'm digging it. I hope you guys get tons and tons of recognition. The louvers, uh, the stacks, everything that you've done is it's outstanding. So I, I hope that he is as happy uh, with the car as it turned out. Yeah, I think, I think so. We're all st stoked with how it came out and the fact that it's gotten so much attention and you know getting on the cover of hot rod for any teenager growing up a car kid that's that's it you know we're done you could almost retire tomorrow <laughs> check these guys out south city ron custom they got some killer c10s they're working on right now we always appreciate talking to joe thanks brother thank you thanks ronnie hanging out we're chilling again more barrett jackson cup and uh we're honored to have rod on we we talked to rod this truck is one of one you know and you hear us say like, oh, that truck is so special. That truck is one of a kind. No, really, this is a one of a kind truck. Fiber forged, Rod Parsons. The guy has great taste and amazing vision and then the ability to make that happen. Rod, we uh, talked to you. We were lucky enough to get to talk to you at Triple Crown out in Nashville. And I think we did, we interviewed you before they picked and right. then they picked and one of your goals was to get here. Right. Six months later, You've been to the get down, you've been to good guys, Southwest Nationals, the final, and now you're here. I mean, everything's happening. Right, everything's happening. But we gotta back up, we gotta talk about Zach. Beep, Zach, beep, Zach beep. Ingram, yeah, you know, back it up. all my boys back at the shop, you know, real proud of all them. This truck wouldn't be, wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Zach Ingram yeah. and, and the guys back at the shop. Z-Rods and Fiber Forged, okay? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm glad to be here. Well, and, and go, that, I'm glad you said that because going back in Nashville, Zach was there, right. you were there, we got to talk, and, and people don't believe it. People do not believe that this is a fully, and I think we did some social media uh, post Triple Crown and people are like, it's not all carbon fiber, right. it's not this, and what do you, do you laugh at that now? Are you to that point now where instead of saying, hey, you dumbass, it is, or do you just laugh and say, this is a completely carbon fiber C10? Well, you know, backing up again, if five years ago, I'd have walked up on this truck and I might have had the same questions, right? So it's, I don't laugh at them. I just tell them, no, it's, it's all carbon. You know, it's not an overlay. You know, it's, a, it's a, not a wrap. And uh, 
it's it is what it is guys it's all carbon fiber cab you know the whole truck every piece so and then and they get it then you know but you know it's it, then it's all good so now i don't laugh at them i don't laugh at nobody so i think one of the things about it is is you were looking to get this out on the track where what's going on with that okay here's where we're at we got one more show the grand national show california and then uh, it goes back to the shop. We got a one piece front end that's gonna go on this truck, which was gonna be uh, available to buy also. And uh, so the one piece front end, then from there we go to Mike Moran's dyno, tuner will fly in, he'll get the, you know, the perimeter's all set good. And then uh, basically after that, we're headed to uh, South Carolina, South Carolina uh, Motorsports Park. And that's where Kyle Tucker will be doing the testing and tuning. Once we feel good about that, we're on the trailer and we're ready to go race. Do you have a goal? So after South Carolina, are you looking at the race schedule and saying, "Hey, I want to make this May event, this June event"? We're, we're. I'm going to give it with Cal, and we're going to sit down and and all the events that Cal can can get in. Uh, I'll be there. You know, if he wants to race 21 races this coming year, I'm there. But you know, we'll just do what we can. Hope we don't have, hope we don't break. Hope everything stays together and. Uh, uh, yeah, we're going. I mean, Optima Series, Pro Trucks Touring Series. Uh, uh, Cal's going to run some like Road America, UMI. He's going to run some road races, and uh, uh, of course, a little bit of autocross, you know, here and there. You know, we'll do some couple good guys and stuff, and uh, we'll come up for the duel in the desert at the end of the year, hopefully. So yeah, we're going to bounce around. You'll see us on the West Coast, South. Where yeah, all over. Yeah. And do you envision? I mean, I think you almost have to, but envision some. Some hey, we've got to do some adjustments. Adjustments because there is going to be some shakedown to where you're really going to be like, hey, we really got to right. shake this thing down, and we got to make some right. some adjustments. Yeah, it's been on the track twice now. Was trying to do a little tune and adjust, and then brake problems both times. Got it off the track a little bit, bumped this corner up, uh, you know. But yeah, there's a lot of adjustment. I mean, we're just getting warmed up, but the truck is running good. Every time Cal gets out of the truck, he looks at me and smiles. He goes. A lot more truck here still yet, you know, and uh, now I feel good. I feel good about having cow behind the wheel, you know, and uh, I'm just, I'm looking for a great time this year. I really am. So get this, I call it show shit. We get this show shit out of the way. We're going racing, baby. When you, uh, I love that. When you get, you think about the show shit, which is, it's fine. It, it yeah. It's it's a great precursor. We had to get it out. Yeah. For that, you know, the, our business, to let everybody see what the business is capable of doing. You know, Zach, you know, he's just amazing. Uh, the whole team at Fiber Forge, Z-Rods, you know, here it is. Look at it. This is, we did all this in-house. Uh, you know, it's easy to say we. In a way, Ron, I'm just a cheerleader, man. These, these young guys, man, they're amazing. I just cheer them on. Let's go. You know, well, you're way more than a cheerleader because you have the vision and somebody's got to pay those bills. Right. So, so don't sell yourself short. If it wasn't for your vision and your pocketbook, then this truck wouldn't be sitting here. Yeah. But really the guys back at the shop, man, when it come down to getting this truck done, I mean, you got to thank their families, you know, their wives. I mean, you know, they bring food in when we're putting in them long hours and just everything that goes into making something like this, something this special. Uh, it's just uh, everybody's involved and just so proud of everybody, you know. Well, very respectful for you to acknowledge that oh, because yeah. you understand that those long hours and, hey, we need to get it out to the Triple Crown. Right. Hey, we've got to get yeah. it to Dino's. We've got to yeah. do this. And when it was wrecked at the Triple Crown, you were fixing it and yeah. there was a little bump yeah. here and you want it to be this right so that you understand that as an employee, employer, yeah. somebody who's saying, hey, I appreciate you guys spending that kind of time to, you know, get this thing out on the road i told zach i said uh man i've been uh, i've been idle too long let's do something i said uh let's get this thing done i said you feel me man and uh, zach said yeah i think i'm feeling you i said well let's go and when at that point we went we had there at the end we had 12 guys hammering on that thing i mean guys sleeping on the cots you know the bake bake room the cut guy ed robinson uh, just an animal. I stayed right there with the truck day and night trying to get it done. Uh, my shop back home, I sent a, uh, one of my guys up to help finish it up. And uh, just a tremendous amount of work goes into making this shit happen right here. You know. And I think you and Zach are really, truly kind of a marriage made in heaven where 
from automotive heaven because yeah. Zach's ability, your vision, and again, somebody's got to pay for this. Yeah. So I could tell from interviewing you guys at Tennessee that there's some great chemistry there. Yeah, Zach, uh, you know, it's funny, you know, uh, Z-Rods, you know, so everybody's like, okay, Zach and Rod, we get that. And I'm like, nah, that was already Z-Rods before Rod come around. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's just been great. I mean, the team that we've put together is just phenomenal, you know, and uh, still a lot more to come out of our shop as far as good stuff. We're just working every day, working, uh, serving the whole industry. And uh, it's, just, it's just unreal how this has unfolded in five years' time. It's went from just, you know, starting out to where we're at. And uh, it's just this truck has proved what the shop's capable of. What well, I think we really need to make sure we're, we're pushing that part is if you're out there and you need some carbon fiber parts for your truck, whether uh, yeah. cab, hood, front clip, right. Uh, this whole truck is part of Fiber Forge and what Z-Rods is doing and with the three entity of Fiber Forge, Z-Rods, Zach and Rod, they, they are making it possible for you to buy anything and everything you want that's going to be carbon fiber and they're not stopping just at C10s. No, no, we're, we're square body, we've done dashes, core supports, we'll just keep rolling right through the trucks. I, I'm a truck guy, you know, Zach's, he likes everything, and I do too, but yeah, we're not going to stop with just this truck. I mean, we're, we we have built a 64 Corvette, there I go with we again, but we've had a 64 Corvette in the shop built for four years now, and uh, full carbon fiber, tub, body, and uh, uh, they just never finished it. So they brought it back to us about six months ago and said, hey, you guys finish this car up. So that's 64 Corvettes coming out. And uh, here in the next year, it'll be we'll have it out. And then there's a little secret going on with a couple of us right now, and I can't let that out. But there's uh, there's some cool factors uh, 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 coming out here in the next uh, next little bit. Hey, stay tuned. Well, there's always something exciting. I'll take you out with this. In the last, you know, 12 months, but let's just say six months, you've had this show shit going on. Yeah. <laughs> what when you look back and you think of all the different things that people come up. What, what what are they saying? What are they asking? Is that really all carbon fiber? You know, that's the first question. And you're not going to race this truck. And, uh, you know, that's when I'm like, I correct them real quick. Yes, we are. The, you know, that's the two big things. I mean, uh, and they have questions about, they want to know what the drivetrain is. And, you know, just they look and they just look and they keep asking questions. But just normal questions like why'd you put that flag on the wheel you know uh, what's what's all this in the back you know and they don't understand the oiling system and uh, you know it's just it's just your normal questions of course there's a lot of people like you come up and you know all about the truck and you know it's all good but I just enjoy answering the questions I mean when I was at Dino's this is the truth Ron my throat was sore by Saturday evening talking to everybody because I enjoy uh, this is what I enjoy. I enjoy talking to you, and it's uh, it's just all good, man. It's just this, this year, you know, we uh, uh, you know the Triple Crown was great, Truck of the Year there, and then Good Guys Truck of the Year, Legends Cup or Legends Cup. We got top six there. Uh, right here, I'm sitting here with top five at Barrett Jackson. Uh, yeah. GNRS is right around the corner. All right, going there next week. I get cold chills, man, talking about all this shit. But, you know, it, it's a good accolade for the truck, you know, and it, it shows off the shop. And, and uh, like I say, I'm so proud of the guys, so proud of Zach. I'm a truck guy, and this is for all the truck guys out there. You know, I, mean, I want to set the bar, make them work a little harder, make yeah. these trucks even nice. I don't even know. I think the bar's been set so high with this truck that it, it will eventually. You, I mean, you, records are meant to be broke, but this thing yeah. is leaps and bounds. You said that the last time on a Z01. Yeah. And uh, so I think I kicked that Z01's you ass. You did, and, and I hope you <laughs> kick it. I hope you kick this one's ass because I can't even wait to see what it is. From Barrett Jackson, from the Barrett Cup, Rod Parsons. Thank you. Thank you.
That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Thanks for tuning in. The third installment of our Barrett Jackson coverage from auctions to cup to things that we're selling. Uh, a lot of different interviews going on there. Let me know what you think. If you like it, split up that way or not. Ronnie at Truck Talk Media. Ronnie at Truck Talk Media. Big Mike Brooks will be next. And then, uh, like I said earlier, I hope everybody has a great week. Out to Conroe, LST, Lone Star Throwdown 2024. Have a great week. Thanks again for tuning in, guys. Peace.